everyone welcome back to my channel so today we are going to discuss principle of x-rays uh, x-ray production how these x-rays are produced and what is the principle basic principle behind these x-ray production <clears throat> so uh, let us discuss it uh, briefly here so we can see that there is a filament here okay so this filament is heated up so when this filament is heated up due to thermoionic emission electrons are emitted out from this filament but what we want is in order to produce x-rays we want these x-rays to accelerate towards this target material so in order to accelerate these electrons towards the target material we provide a high voltage between this target material and this filament okay so the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the target material so the electrons can accelerate towards this target material electrons are negatively charged so they will be accelerated towards this target material and as a result of which when these uh, electrons interact with the atoms of the target material x-rays are produced okay so this is the brief introduction to the x-ray production we are going to discuss this in detail in the upcoming slides okay <clears throat> so what are the contents these are the contents which we are going to discuss in this video first is the introduction a basic introduction uh, of x-rays what is the basic idea behind these x-rays we are going to discuss it in this section secondly we are going to discuss the history of x-ray invention how the x-rays were invented who invented x-rays and a basic story behind these discovery okay so it become more interesting for us to discuss these x-rays okay <clears throat> And thirdly, we are going to atomics, uh, discuss the atomic structure. So why we are going to discuss atomic structure? It is because X-rays mainly interact with the atomic structure of the particular target material. So we should know the basic idea behind the atomic structure. Next, we are going to discuss types of X-ray production, the ways, the different ways from which, from which this X-rays are produced. We are going to discuss it in this section. So now basically there are three ways which are characteristic radiation means the characteristic x-ray radiation how these characteristic x-ray radiations are produced we are going to discuss it in this section and secondly we are going to discuss the Bremsstrahlung x-ray radiation which are the result of Bremsstrahlung scattering so these are the contents we are going to discuss in this video okay Now the introduction part, what are X-rays? X-rays are basically a part of electromagnetic radiation spectrum, okay? So the wavelength of X-rays varies from 0.01 nanometer to 10 nanometers, okay? How these X-rays are produced? When a beam of accelerated electrons interact with the atom of target materials, X-rays are produce so this part we have already discussed it okay so when these electrons are bombarded on a target material x-rays are produced okay <clears throat> now whatever energy carried away by this incident electron 99% of it is converted into the heat energy and very less energy which is 0.2% of the energy of the incident electron is converted to the energy of the x-ray photon okay now when x-ray photons interact with patient there are number of possible interaction between x-rays and atoms of mediums okay so this interaction mainly depends upon the energy of the photon okay the energy of the emitted photon and what is the characteristic of the absorbing material how much amount of energy can be absorbed by this material it depends on the uh, property of the material okay now next one is these interactions are very important we should uh, we should uh, know well known the interactions of this electrons with the material should be well known by us why because it is very important in diagnostic radiology for image formation as well as 
radiation protection to patient as well as worker so in order to protect the patients and the worker which are working in this radiations we should know the physics behind these interactions very carefully okay now let us discuss the brief history behind the discovery of x-rays so how these x-rays were invented so on 8th november 1895 a german physicist sir wc rongton so what happened to wc rongton that day he was actually working on a cathode ray tube experiment okay so that day what happened is when he was working on this experiment he did some variations in his experimental setup and accidentally what he saw he saw that there is a material which is barium palatino cyanide screen which is shining or we can say there is some fluorescence on this material so initially what he thought was there is some leakage in his experimental setup so he covered the entire setup but still the fluorescence was there on that screen so he was not able to figure it out okay so for few days uh, he did not uh, tell anyone about this in this in his university because he was a professor there so people will make fun of him that he had done such a blunder in his experiment that a leakage is occurring in the experimental setup okay but when he uh, but during this uh, during his investigation of what is this uh, what is this why is this material is shining what he did is he put a book between those rays he found out that the rays passes through the book also then he put his hand over these rays then the rays passes through his rays or his hand also okay so he noticed that this is something these are some rays which can pass through almost all matter particles almost all materials okay so since he did not know anything about these rays he named them x-rays so invention of these x-ray discovery of these x-ray was actually an accidental discovery sir w singh rongton was not willing to discover x-rays he was working on some other experiment and x-rays were actually accidentally discovered okay so since he did not know anything about these rays so he named them x-rays we do this in mathematics that we don't know anything about some quantity so we consider it we assume it as x so these rays were assumed to be x rays and from then on then onwards these rays were called x rays okay so this is the story behind the invention of x rays <clears throat> now let us discuss the atomic structure okay so what is the atomic structure today whatever concept we are uh, considering according for the atomic structure is taken from the bohr's model bohr gave his model for the atomic structure according to his model he gave three statement what are the three statement first statement was electrons revolve around nucleus in a circular orbit and the centripetal force required for that circular motion will be provided by the coulomb force between electrons and protons secondly he said that electrons will orbit in the in a particular orbit where its momentum will be the integral multiple of planck's constant h bar okay third uh, his third statement was he said that he said that whenever there is a transition of electron from a higher energy level to a lower energy level or a lower energy level to a higher ener energy level whatever uh, it will be there is a respective photon emitted and what will be the energy of that photon the energy of that photo photon will be equal to the difference of both the energy levels okay now there are different principal quantum numbers assigned to different energy levels for example for k shell it is 1 for l shell it is 2 for m shell it is 3 and so on and so forth okay now the number of electrons which can be uh, you know which can be filled in a particular orbit 
is filled according to the uh, principle two n square. Okay, so for k, for k n is one. Okay, so according to two n square, how many electrons can be filled in k shell? Two electrons. Okay, because n is equal when we put n is equal to one in this formula, we'll get two. Okay, so two electrons can be filled in k shell. Similarly, for l shell, how many electrons can be filled? For for l shell, the principal quantum number is n is equal to two. So two square is four. Four into two is eight. So this is how electrons are filled in a particular orbit, which is according to the their principal quantum number. Okay. Now, the entire positive charge of the atom. resides in the nucleus okay so protons so what are the particles which are in nucleus protons and neutrons reside in the nucleus and the electrons revolve around the nucleus in a circular orbit okay now different materials will have different number of protons and electrons in their atom okay but if there is a same material then the number of electrons and protons in all the atoms of that given material will be same okay so this is the basic concept behind the atomic structure furthermore we are going to discuss briefly uh, discuss in detail how x rays were produced and bram strahlin's scattering also we are going to discuss and also the characteristic scattering okay so these are the two kinds of x rays we are going to discuss in detail in the upcoming video so in order to resolve all your doubts regarding x ray production you should watch the entire video and thank you so much for watching the video